With mile after mile of coast roads, hilly inland sections, very little traffic, and interesting cars to choose from, Cuba seems to have real potential for great driving. But acquiring a car to pilot on said roads can be a major obstacle. Is procuring a set of keys even doable? We're going to find out as Autoblog hunts rental cars in Cuba. We found a car rental place, Cuba Car, just around the block from the entrance of our hotel, and we're actually going to go in and see if we can rent a car now so we can uh, try and find out about driving on Cuban roads for ourselves. Booking online is almost always the easiest way to go when traveling abroad. But in a country where American credit cards don't work, it's dicey. Unfortunately, we found out that every car at Cuba Car has been rented out in advance by international travelers who, who booked already. So they don't have any cars right now. We've got a lead on another place not too far away that's open 24 hours. So the adventure for finding a rental car continues. After driving across town in a taxi, we found ourselves in yet another Cuban rental car hotspot. All right, so Cuba Car office number two. This one's actually got a showroom slash garage. We thought we had a lot of help. Turns out, no dice. We did find out some really useful information, though. First of all, we found out that if we were going to get a car, there's a three-day minimum. For a full-size car, which seemed to be the thing that was maybe most available, it'd be about 110 coupes, which is right around $110. And you'd have to pay a $200 deposit. So not completely different than a car rental in the US. Uh, it's just more difficult because you're paying in cash and you can't pay with a credit card. It's seeming increasingly likely that we won't actually be able to drive ourselves. So in that case, really the story just becomes, uh, start talking to taxi drivers, find out some prices, uh, see who's amenable to take us on a little bit of a ride and get a look at some of the Cuban roads. So as you can see, uh, we did not rent a car that I'm able to drive. Uh, instead, uh, Chris Peter and I are on our way vaguely west out of Havana. We are um, in search of Hemingway's house and we are riding along in a 57 Chevy convertible. There are countless options when it comes to taxis in Havana, and this 57 Chevy suited our actual travel need, I suppose. Still, I never got behind the wheel, which is too bad. Yeah, the roads are in various states of disintegration. The speed limit's low and the car's unpredictable. But that's exactly the sort of driving that makes for a great story. And more importantly, for great memories. So what did we learn about renting a car? Uh, we learned that trying to rent one that you can drive yourself is difficult, nigh on to impossible if you're doing it on the spur of the moment. You've got to be prepared in advance to know when you want the car. It helps if you can book it online, certainly, especially if you're an American, because that might give you the opportunity at least to pay with credit and not have to have cash up front. We also learned that if you're interested in just kind of like a few hour trip, like coming out to the Hemingway house, it might just be way more economical to rent a car and a driver. It's pretty easy to pick the one that you want. Everybody is great at negotiating and it, it's not a problem just to get around by way of having a chauffeur. On the other hand, if you like me just like driving no matter the circumstance, the vehicle or where you are, uh, it's good to get out in front of things. Uh, next time I come down, I'm definitely going to try and set up a car in advance so that I can really explore the roads from a first person perspective. In the meantime, I'm a passenger, not a driver. But I am Seth Meersma for Autoblog. Thanks for watching.